Welcome to the Writer's Den. My name is Jane Waters Thomas, and today we have a very special author that we're going to speak to, Mr. Riley Short. Welcome, Riley. Thank you. Appreciate it. Riley has written a book about the importance of remembering those that gave all, and they gave their future. And whenever you see, I almost put it down, but whenever you see the gold star on the front of this book and you read these stories, the further into the book that you get, the more you will realize the importance of that gold star on a service flag. First of all, anything to do with, with our veterans and the men and women that serve, that take care of us, um, I love, love to do those interviews. I just think they're very special. And, and to be able to showcase um, some of the important men and women of our community um, is just had to have been an honor to be able to write such a book. You know, it was um, it was on my bucket list. It's something I really wanted to do. I grew up, I uh, was just a kid during World War II, but uh, I, I just felt like that uh, all along support for the military and for our soldiers and they would come to our house after church for dinner and they were stationed a long way from home, that sort of thing. And uh, then when I went to a cemetery in Italy, it, it, just, it just struck me and that was where I got the name of the book, They Gave Their Future. And I just was really moved by that mm -hmm. and decided I wanted to do that someday. And so and that's I'm how it came to be. Did, did you believe that you were going to write the book or, or did you want to share the story and do the research? I mean, what was your thought in actually producing this book that was a part of a dream? Well, I was hoping that somebody else would produce <laughs> the book because I, it, someone had had more time and expertise in doing research, mm -hmm. uh, but um, no one else would do it. They always They would always say to me, your book you need to write it mm. and it's self-published I paid for it I didn't do it for money I, I didn't do it for fame I just did it for the boys I love that and um, and and that takes us to to the point of the entire book which are are the boys that were at Lakeland High School That's right. that you wanted to honor and um, in in their book um, they gave their future there's 33 chapters and 34 lives documented right. in this book. Um, some of the fam families um, are well-known names within our community, mm -hmm. such as the Putnam family. Yeah, that's right. and, and how was that to interview for these types of things? Well, the, the Putnam that's in my book was not mm -hmm. a part of the political people in, mm -hmm. from Bar Bartow. Bartow. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Ernest Wisnotsky is probably the biggest name as far as uh, the families in in uh, in Polk County. Okay. Uh, but um, I did get to visit with uh, the Putnams and uh, they were very helpful uh -huh. um, and were able to share with me about Adam, not Adam, it's uh, about the young man and mm -hmm. it was very very good to talk with them. Absolutely. It, and it's interesting. There's a, they have a headstone out at the cemetery, but he was buried at sea. Oh, really? But the family wanted to have something in town that they could go to and visit that would be, and it has this picture on it, uh, on the headstone. So that was kind of interesting. Absolutely. Um, one of one, the one chapter that's the two brothers. Yes. Um, as you did your research on this family, what were some of your feelings? I, I would think that that would be so moving to be doing the research on two brothers that were lost from one family. Um, yeah, it was. Um, the, the, I didn't get to visit with the family on that mm -hmm. one. <clears throat> I tried. But mm -hmm. sometimes families are not really, uh, it's too painful for them. Mm -hmm. And I think this was one of those cases. Mm -hmm. So those two, two young men, my research was strictly uh, without help from the family. Um, there were a few that were that way. 
How did you do the research when, when the family wasn't available? I did, uh, I found obituaries um, in, in the ledger mm -hmm. and I found pictures in the annuals, the high school annual at Lakeland High School. And then I did um, uh, the census, the United States census would tell me where they lived and who the family members were. Um, and that, that worked. There's one chapter where I had gone in and found the census, and, but I couldn't find out any information uh, from the draft boards or anything about this, pers this one young man mm -hmm. where he was killed. And, but I did find the, name, the family name and I found a picture in the annual. And when the book came out, a woman called me and said, my name's in your book. Oh, funny. But she said, that's not my brother. And he wasn't killed in the war. But I had a picture with the name, and so I knew there were two with the same name. Uh -huh. So that chapter was not complete, and I, it's the last chapter. And I said, if it, I don't know any more than this, but I hope to find out. And I did find out eventually. Uh, the young man's family had moved to Michigan and he he joined the service through Michigan and he's listed as killed in action in Michigan. Oh, I so see. So that's why I couldn't find anything on him in Florida. Um, very interesting. He actually flew 50 missions over Germany, bombing missions. If you flew 25, you came home. He flew tw 25, came home, went back, flew 25 more. Then he was killed in a training accident in Texas. Huh. So it was really some of the typical sad stories of these mm -hmm. young men. They all were so nice looking mm -hmm. and so uh, did very well in school mm -hmm. and were popular in, in their school. Um, some of them played football, some played basketball. Um, they uh, were all involved in churches and involved in uh, clubs and mm -hmm. it was just fascinating to and you pick that up through the annual. Mm -hmm. um, being a child during mm -hmm. that time what were some of your thoughts you know um, the the um, blue star to gold star um, reference um, is, is a big deal do you recall seeing those flags and, and realizing what was happening? Absolutely I almost, I lived in Louisville, Kentucky when I was at this, at the war, mm -hmm. uh, most of the war. And I would go down the street and you would see the flags in every window. Mm -hmm. And you would see the blue stars and you knew what that meant. And then all of a sudden they would have a gold star up and you knew there was a sorrow there. Yeah. and. Um and I'm just thinking, you know, the emotion, the emotional range of a 10-year-old child walking down the streets and looking at this kind of thing. Um, I'm sure you felt very proud that, that that was, you know, that you saw those flags. Looking back on that time um, and recognizing that you really saw those stars change from, from blue to gold, at this point, do you think that you, you realize the impact? I, I don't remember that I did. Uh, I mean, I... I think um, children dealing with death uh, mm -hmm. it varies with ages. Right. And uh, I think the their first encounter, a child's first encounter with death is when a pet dies. Mm -hmm. That's when the last things our pet gives us is a lesson about life and death. And usually the grandparents die. Well, so my grandparents were all living and, mm -hmm. and died later in my life. And I'd lost a dog, but that was it. So I, I doubt that I could deal right. with it personally. Now, there are a lot of children that could do that. We know, and, and that question comes from actually reading um, an interview in um, a local paper. And in the interview, it talked about, um, you know, 
listening to the radio, knowing kind of what was going on around you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I would have to imagine that even today, if, if we had that kind of instance in our community, that the impact would have been substantial, even as a child. Now that part, yes, I w there was a lot of fear mm -hmm. and, and some anxiety concerning the war. Um, I remember going to Miami Beach to visit my grandfather mm -hmm. during the war, and we had blackout when uh, blackout curtains because uh, the German U-boats were right off the coast, mm -hmm. and and that was scary to me that they, they could possibly invade. Um, I worried about bombs, uh, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, there was some mm -hmm. a lot of anxiety about that. Um, so that part, yes, um, the fear of the war coming mm -hmm. to my house. <laughs> right. Well, and, and, and you've gone on in your life to, to be a, a servant of God, to be a minister leading others. Um, how did your childhood impact what you would do in, in your life as an adult? Because not all of us can say that we were around when, when the war was happening. Right. You know. I, I don't know that the war had the effect upon me to be in the ministry. Mm -hmm. um, it was, um, it, it, my father was a preacher. That, and that put me in the arena. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I must tell you that I fought it because of that. I, I did not want to be a minister. I did not want to be a preacher. Mm -hmm. Um, and I fought it for as long as I could. Um, but I don't think that, that World War II had it, that effect on me. I think it was mm -hmm. my father's influence and in being raised in the church and open to the movement of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. I just love that, that this book is, is written in honor of the boys that were at Lakeland High School. And so, you know, just trying to tie it all together um, because you're not your average book writer. No. Uh, you're not. And, and, and you've even said in interviews, you know, that you didn't see yourself as a writer. And, but it's your story, and so you have to write this book. And so I was wondering if there was any ties to anything, you know, from, from those other areas of your life that, that helped influence, yeah, this has to be done. We, we have to write this book and honor these, these boys and tell a greater story. I think the, if you ever go to an American cemetery on foreign territory mm -hmm. and it doesn't affect you, right. there's something really bad yes, wrong sir. with that's you. Right. <laughs> so that's what, that's what did it for me. Mm. And it brought back the memories that I had of a child mm -hmm. during the war, the sense of, the incredible sense of oneness in the nation. We, we were together as I've mm -hmm. never seen. Came close when the Twin Towers went down. But this was consistent during the four years of World mm -hmm. War II that we were together as a nation and we were proud Americans. And uh, all of that came back to me when I went, when I saw the first of the cemeteries, American cemeteries, mm -hmm. and seeing those crosses and realizing that these were young men who were far, far away from home in places they had, it was in, it, my, the first one I saw was in Italy. Right. And probably the only thing they knew about Italy was that it was, this nation was in the shape of a boot. Um, <laughs> and here they were buried over there. And it just all um, stirred my heart. And I, I wanted, I wanted to, write their story. I wanted somebody to write their stories to tell about these young men, how they had given their future for us. Mm -hmm. And I found out later that there was a plaque on the wall of Lakeland High School. It's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. But there used to be a plaque with these boys' names on it. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I found out about the 34 boys. And Hazel Haley told me about it told me about the plaque and all, and I told her my dream of having, and I wanted her children, her students to write the book. I thought, Hazel, you could get them to go and 
they could find their pictures in the annual and they could find out where they lived and get pictures of their homes and they could write their stories. And she said, I don't, that's not the kind of writing that I teach. I teach creative writing. I mm -hmm. said, you can creatively do this, <laughs> right. Hazel. But if you knew Hazel, that was, uh, I, I was going up a dead end street. <laughs> so she said, you write it. And, and uh, so finally, after going back to Normandy again, and my wife said, it's time for you to do it. Mm. So that's how I got into it. Well, um, I am certain just just reading some of the, the reviews of, of the book locally, um, that the families are thrilled that you did take the time to write the book. Um, what were some of the responses that you received from families that you did get to talk to? Well, um, they were they were very pleased that I was doing it. Uh, even the ones that didn't want to talk to me were pleased I was doing it. Um, it was just painful for them. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody wants to be forgotten. Right. And nobody wants to have their family forgotten, especially when they died in the service of their country. Mm -hmm. So they they would all been pleased with that um, <clears throat> they I, I, and, and a lot of them I saw after the book mm -hmm. because I couldn't find them um, I found a, a nephew over in Largo of one of the boys mm. and he really gave me a lot of material that if I, I could add to this book probably another s book the same size with what I've learned since. His, his uh, uncle was um, uh, taken captive at the Battle of the Bulge and died in captivity. And mm -hmm. I didn't know that when I wrote the book. I didn't know how he had died. Right. He had pictures of the young man with his fiancee and uh, uh, found out who she was and uh, her story, that sort of thing, which was, uh, and he was delighted to share it with me because mm -hmm. it was his uncle, though he never knew his uncle. It was, it was an honor for him to share it with me and uh, excited about it. Were there any interviews that you did or any research that you did that just pulled at your heart that just seemed like a story that was overwhelming compared to some of the other stories? Um, yeah, I think so. I, um, uh, they all, they all pulled at my heartstrings. Mm -hmm. these, every one of these young men became one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I drive by their houses where they lived or where their houses used to be. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, wave to them because mm -hmm. they became very close friends of mine. Um, so they all were, they all pulled at my heartstrings. Uh, Ernest Wisnotsky's family were really helpful too. And Ernest was a state tennis star uh, champion. Um, he was a uh, uh, very bright officer of his class every year. Mm -hmm. um, and he was, he was killed by, uh, with just less than two weeks to go in the uh -huh. war in Europe. And he was killed by fanatical German youth that were armed with automatic weapons. They ambushed the unit. No one was fighting anymore over there. They were surrendering in mass. And, and then here these young people came along and, and, and killed, uh, I think it was 35 in his unit at one. Mm. It, it, and that was a tragedy to me so close to the end of the war and mm -hmm. uh, the young people from Germany that were brainwashed essentially mm -hmm. and did this and they were all killed then. Um, you know, I, I think that when I, I look at individual lives um, in this book anyway, in, in the story content, um, the thing that, that overwhelmingly strikes me is that they're gone and they were for us. 
if, if I break down the, you know, just the sentence, they were for us. Mm -hmm. um, what do you hope that your readers um, will get from this book? Well, I certainly hope they would get to the point where they would stand for the national anthem. <laughs> right, right. That would be lovely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be perfect. Um, that's what these guys died so they could stay seated. But, right. but um, I would hope that they would say, hey, I, I'm going to stand in honor of these people who, have, who gave their future for freedom. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's a, a and, and one of the things that I hope for this book was that the, that the generations that are here now mm -hmm. would understand the basis of that freedom, where, how, how close we came to losing it. Mm -hmm. um, and how the whole world was in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it took an, an incredible effort and an incredible number of people were killed, uh, civilians as well as soldiers. So I want them to understand in the history of things mm -hmm. what was done for us to be able to continue to live freely. Have you talked with any youth, um, maybe from your congregation or from the community, um, who have read the book and, and what their take is on, on the stories that you've told? Oh, well, one of them I talked to was my granddaughter, who just graduated last year from Lakeland High School. Mm -hmm. And um, she read the book and was impressed with the fact that these were the same kind of kids that she goes to school with now. Mm -hmm. And um, she was, uh, I also took her to Germany with me, so she was able to see some concentration camps and that sort of thing mm -hmm. to get a sense of history. That would be unfair because she was really close knit mm -hmm. to, to the whole thing. Um, and other young people from Lakeland High School have talked to me about the book mm -hmm. that went that go to our church, uh -huh. and um, simply did not realize uh, how how young the soldiers were mm -hmm. that were that were in the book and were killed. Right, right. Yeah, we you know, nineteen twenty to twenty four, twenty six. Our kids are still in college right now. Yeah, right. And and that it is something that is so far removed from their thoughts of reality. Um, I was just curious if, if you'd had any opportunity to speak with some kids and, and find what they would think. Um, you know, my son's in college now and is headed off to the Air Force when he's done with school. Um, and I know that he would read something like this and he would immediately understand it. But he also attended Summerlin High School and, or Academy, I should say, Summerlin mm -hmm. Academy. And so, sure. it, you know, that's a different kind of school. And, um, and I think, you know, the perspective of what are we teaching our kids about our history? What are we teaching our kids about our heritage and, and the bloodshed and the lives lost and what that really looks like? I love that your granddaughter's, you know, opinion was those look like kids that I go to school with. Yeah. Because it really was. It's very definitely. You know. A lot of them didn't even finish high school. If you, if you went into the service, you were given your degree. Mm. So some of them left early and got their degrees, though they obviously didn't graduate. Mm -hmm. But um, that was an honorary degree for serving your that's, country. That's true. And, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, so you said the final chapter is sort of not finished, which is exciting because that means there may be another book. Uh, you know, I don't think I'll write another book. I'm, I, what I'm going to what I've done is I've already done all the research and written it up, the, mm -hmm. what I would add to the book, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to put it in the library for future research, the, the research part of the library in Lakeland and over to the high school too. 
That is very exciting. Well, Mr. Short, I want to thank you for coming to the Writer's Den and sharing oh, your story. Thank you. thank you. I think it's amazing. I love that in your book, um, they gave their future. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the two blue stars and the one gold star, and it makes such great sense when you read this book. Um, that's just, it's going to drive it home to see that and, and read these stories. I just want to thank you for coming out. Now, thank you. Um, do you ever go out and speak to groups or, oh, yeah. or share? Mm -hmm. How would somebody get a hold? of you if they wanted to have you come and speak about your book and, and the experience of writing your book? Well, they can write me uh, or call me, um, email me. I don't have, I don't think it's in the book, but uh, I, you can call First Methodist Church in Lakeland and they'll tell you how to get in touch with me. Awesome. And well, I have very few books left. It's, it's been a good seller. Um, but we have some on sale at the bookstore at the church and a couple at Marshall's Jewelry sells them for me too. I do speak a lot. Um, I'm speaking to the uh, Rotary Club in St. Petersburg about the book. I've spoken to just about every civic club in town and book clubs and uh, that sort of thing and um, church groups. Um, PEO, uh, and, and in fact, I have three uh, speaking engagements on the book uh, coming up the week of uh, Veterans Day. So Wonderful. people are interested in hearing the stories and hearing about these young men. Absolutely, and the perspective of, of all of them being from one high school in one town and the research that went into it. Thank you so much for what you've done thank you. for these families, and thank you for being with us. Thank you.